Hello again, I'm back in the workshop today. I've been working on this project by request. This is a display shield that fits over a mega board. It just plugs right on. It was fairly tricky to get this working with XPL Pro, but I have accomplished it to a certain degree. I want to talk a little bit about some limitations that we have with the way that X-Plane provide the data for the CDU. It doesn't give us any positioning information. All of that it gives us is a line, some attributes like the color, and the size. And the size is either large or normal. One of the problems with that is that on some lines, like this one, the spaces come through as normal and then the text comes through as large. So if you want things to line up on the right side like this, you have to consider the whole line large. The problem with that is that some lines are sent to us and have smaller characters in the middle. We don't have enough information to display everything the way that it's supposed to be displayed. Another problem is that large and small are subjective. I'm using font sizes that come with the, uh, this is the XPL wiki drivers that you'll have to download to, to make this happen. It gives me a choice of several different font sizes. I chose two that work, one for normal, one for large, and it does a pretty good job, but things don't quite look right, so you're going to have to deal with those limitations. If you want to make a CDU or FMS device that works perfectly, you'll have to make some adjustments. One thing I found is that the heading on here can be helpful, in, ca in this case index, so if you see that on there you might change things around. But I do have the code working pretty well as far as receiving the data the way that it's sent to us. There is a little bit of spurious data here at the bottom. I haven't worked out why that is, but I'll try to finish that up. But I wanted to get the video out. If you look on these different pages, I've also implemented special characters. These come through as Unicode, so that was kind of a pain. I'm mapping them to characters that are available in the character set that comes with the drivers for this device. Look at a couple of these pages. You can also see the updates kind of on the slow side. That's a combination of how we're getting it from X-Plane, but mostly it's how long it takes the Mega to send the screen. I've tried this on all of the FMSs that come with X-Plane and they work. I have not done this for the Zybo 737. That has a whole different set of data refs and I'll attack that next since it's a popular platform. You can see the scratch pad works without updating the whole screen. This is an example of one of the lines that has text on it that's two different sizes. The ALT and the ON are supposed to be small, and then the standby and then the transponder code there are supposed to be big. Problem is, uh, if if I change it, then it changes the, the spacing for other pages. Like I said earlier, if you have a specific FMS that you're trying to make, you'll have to look at each page and figure out kind of how the spacing is supposed to be and set it manually. I am not going to go thoroughly over the code, but I want to show you just an outline of how it works. Since, since each type of display sort of has its own method for communicating with, I have isolated the code that's specific to the display from the code that we use to interpret the data that we get from X-Plane. I've, I've called this XPL Pro CDU 9486. I will send this to the Patreon page and also to my Discord server. There's really not much in here. I've made a class for the CDU display driver, which I open and then it does all the work. So just in the loop you have to send it 
to update. You just send the whole inbound handler to it and even the registration and then the shutdown. That code has handles all that stuff. There's a, there's a lot going on in here. This is where I'm processing the Unicode symbols that come through. All the data refs that we that we use are in here. So if you want to tweak the way that things are going to display, you would do it in this class. The last one is how it communicates with the display. So if you want to support a different type of display driver, I've made it so all you have to do is support these functions right here. How you do that is going to be dependent upon which display and, and how their drivers work. I do plan to do the Adafruit Arcada next. But I'll probably need to do a couple other projects before and then I'll come back to that. That's all I have for you here. I do encourage you to use our Discord to communicate. That's the best place. I watch that pretty constantly. Patreon is not very good as far as notifying me when there's messages there. But I do check it now and then. Certain things can be discussed in the YouTube comment section, and that's always nice to see things there. But the most effective way to communicate with me is, is on Discord. So I hope to see you there. I need to finish my uh, mechanical gauges that I, were, that, that I was working on. I also need to finish the 737 MCP project, which is pretty much done anyway. In the next video, I'm probably going to go over things that have changed. I've added a couple features to the uh, XPL Pro library and plugin that you might be interested in. I'll see you there.